Hello everybody and welcome back to Fantastic Projectiles and Where to Fire Them. Wait, is that copyrighted? Hello everybody and welcome back to another Mythic Mobs tutorial. We're going to be covering part two of our projectile mechanic today. And uh, Well, if you haven't seen the first one, I recommend you go and go back and watch that one because it covers basically the essentials of this mechanic. This is just going to be showing you more of the variables for more advanced creations. If you have not watched it, I will have the link in the description for you. If you have, well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to cover some of the few basic ones first before we get into the really crazy stuff. First one I want to cover is called HP, which stands for Hit Players. This is generally defaulted to true because it's a mob casting it. However, you can change it to false and this will cause it to fly right through whatever player it is targeting. As you can see, generally it would have stopped at where I'm at. But we disabled it hitting players, which means it's just going to fly right through me. Next is H er apologies. Hit non-players. This means it's going this means it can it may or may not hit entities uh, including animals or mobs. This is generally defaulted to false, but it can be changed to true, say if you wanted to do damage to uh, maybe a pig or something. Let me go ahead and go into creative here and get a spawn egg, and I will show you what I mean. Actually, let's get, let's get a cow. I'm feeling some cooked beef. Okay, let me go ahead and go back into survival here. Make sure he's still targeting me. Alright, and... Here we go. As you can see, it did damage to the cow because it now hits non players as well. The next variable I'm going to cover is hug surface. This, I, this means it will hover along the surface no matter where it's aiming at. So if I jump up in the air like this, it still just glides right along the surface. This is pretty important because. It will also uh, hover over blocks that may be in its path as well. For example, whoosh. as you can see, it went right over the block. That's what Hug Surface will do. It'll cause it to just ride over and continue going. Next, we have a few different ones. There's SB, which stands for Stop at Block. This is generally defaulted to true, but you can set it to false if you want it to fly on until it hits something. So let me go and reload here. There's a block in between us. Oops, I did not do that right. Okay, my apologies. I realize I had it set to true still. If you set it to false, it'll keep it will continue to fly on. As you can see, right through the block still hit me. This generally isn't recommended for most boss fights, considering, you know, you want to have some sense of realism and safety whenever fighting. Well, at least generally. But I can see some situations in which this will not be necessary. It's totally up to your discretion. Next is Stop at Entity. That should be pretty straightforward. Generally, this is set to false as well. Er, no, I apologize. This is generally set to true, because whenever it would hit me, it would smoke. And it would stop there. But, now, let me get out of the way here. It would still be doing damage to me if I wasn't in god mode. As you can see, it just kind of dragged me along there. But it didn't stop, though. This can be helpful for any kind of, um any kind of piercing projectile that you want to use. It might be recommended for fire abilities just for the sake of, you know, it's fire. It's not like a solid thing, so of course it's going. It's not going to stop. But that's at your choice as well. Now we're going to do a few more different variables here. I forgot to mention, we're not going to mess with any of this stuff. Uh, all this is covered in the previous tutorial. This is no longer relevant. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with starting Y offset. This is how high up or down the projectile will be starting on your mob. I went ahead and go ahead and yeah, I went ahead and set it to 10 just to show you guys what that will look like. 
So this means it will spawn roughly 10 blocks or units up, whatever the mythic mobs thing is set to. In my opinion, it kind of looks like curling fireballs, like meteors coming in. But, you know, you can imagine whatever you want. No matter how high up it is, it's always going to target my location. Next is starting side offset. We're going to go ahead and change this down to probably three. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate this uh, string here by pressing Ctrl D or copying and pasting. Your choice. But we're going to go ahead and set this to negative three. So what we'll have is some sort of X shape going on. As you can see, it targets me, and it keeps going in crosses. It's because it starts off on both sides of the mob, three to the left and three to the right, but it still targets my location, which means if I back up, it just goes right on around me. Same with if I go forward, although the odds of dodging it aren't as likely if you're running towards the projectile. But as you can see, it crosses and continues on till the end of its life. This can make some for some very cool projectile skills. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of this now. There's another one called starting forward offset. I don't think this one's necessary because this is how far forward a projectile will start on your mob, and in my opinion it just doesn't make sense since your mob is, you know, casting it. Most magic based stuff you're gonna use your hands so it wouldn't make sense for a projectile to spawn all the way out here then fly. But again, that's at your discretion. Next is Horizontal Offset. This is another one where you're going to want to pair up a few different projectiles here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have that set to... I'm going to have that set to 15, this is going to be set to 0, and these are going to be set to negative 15. These are all going to be done in angles around where the mob is shooting. So this one's going to come straight at me, and then these two are going to go off slightly to the side to make a sort of pitchfork effect. Let me go ahead and show you. See, and there they go. This can also make for some really, really cool effects. And you can make as many as you want at whatever rotation you want. All that depends on how many times you duplicate the string and how many or whatever you set this variable to be. Next is going to be vertical offset. Um, basically, same concept except up and down. I don't think this one's very necessary just because, well, I mean, you can kind of see why. As well, vertical offset isn't quite as accurate with its angles as you can see, because I set this to 15, and it's shooting as if it's almost at 90 degrees. This one will require a lot of playing around. But this can be really cool if you're making some sort of effect where it's like, I don't know, say artillery, and it shoots it, and it... That's going to be involved in our next mechanic here. So let me go ahead and turn this down to a reasonable level here. Maybe, maybe five. We're going to go ahead and delete these. The last thing I'm going to cover, actually two more things, gravity, which is equal to G. This is the weight in which your projectile is going to fall. It does require a little bit of uh, playing around with to get it just right because there's really no set weight or uh, way to figure out how heavy it's going to be or how fast it's going to fall. It's just something for you to play around with. But I said it's gravity to three and it's vertical offset to uh, five. Or, yeah, five. So as you can see, it's just kind of falling like a waterfall. Three may have been a little bit much for it. Do know this will also vary with your velocity. The higher velocity you have, the further out it'll go. There we go, and as you can see, it's kind of getting a little bit further. Say if I were to set this to uh, maybe 20, you'll see a much different effect. See, there it goes. Do you know it won't always hit your target's location? This one kind of limits it to a radius. Uh, the radius is figured out by whatever numbers you set. But, as you can see, it won't go to my location because the gravity is pulling it downward. This can be really cool for a visual effect, say if you're wanting to have really big explosions occur, or you just, I don't know, you want to add just some sort of like visual effect where you, you have some like vortex or ring going on or something, you know, kind of, you just kind of see it going all around. Your discretion is well. 
but I personally prefer not to mess with these. Now the last thing that we're gonna start with, or do, this is like kind of a double here. Let me go and turn off vertical offset. Um, so what this is, there's a type called Meteor. Now instead of launching it from the mob itself, it's going to launch it from directly above me. Now one thing we have to do before this will actually work properly is add another little variable called height from surface. This is generally best set to around 10 in my opinion, but you can do it wherever you want. Of course, gravity will make a difference here too. The higher the gravity is, the faster it'll fall. Velocity actually plays no part in this beyond this point. So, that's entirely up to you on how you decide to use it. As you can see, they're all just falling down below me every time I right click. But that's really all the crazy stuff that you can do with this mechanic. I mean, there's so many variables to it. There's everything I showed you in the beginning and everything I showed you on this video. It's just, it's, it, it's insane. It's everybody's favorite and there's a pretty good reason it was highly requested. It's, it's a very, very awesome mechanic and I do hope they do more with it. Uh, there's also more complicated mechanics out there like Aura and Orbital. I'll get around to those later on. It, they're, they're pretty much the same as this, but just, you know, a little bit lengthy to explain. This is all I have for you guys today, so if you like this video, or it inspired you any, please give it a like or a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.